Hi, welcome back to Mel's Health. I'm Mel and as always, it's lovely to have you here with me today. I've had a pretty tired week this week and I'm kind of lacking in motivation. So this is just a short video to tell you guys about the results of the scans and tests that I had as part of my nine month review and I'll discuss a few aspects of it. So I got a call from my thrombosis doctor towards the end of last week and she told me that finally at my nine month review CT scan that my clots have dissolved and they are gone now. They're not showing up on the scan anymore. Although that's actually good news because they've gone now, it doesn't explain why I don't feel any different. So I'm waiting on an appointment with my GP so that I can ask to actually get a copy of these reports and scans so I can decipher it all myself. But what she told me over the phone was that I will need a CT repeated in a year because my lungs are showing scarring and nodules. So these two things, extensive scarring and lung nodules could be the reason why I'm still experiencing pain on a daily basis. A lot of people get told that they have nodules in their lungs. It's not uncommon. Pulmonary nodules are round or oval shaped growths inside the lung and they're generally no more than three centimeters in diameter. Anything larger than that is then considered a pulmonary mass, which is more likely to be associated with cancers than nodules. As I said, they are pretty common. And if you look them up on a lot of health websites, you'll see that the statistics show that they show up on around half of all lung CT scans. Many benign pulmonary nodules are caused by inflammation occurring in the lungs after an infection or disease. So this could be things like pneumonia, which I've now had twice, and then obviously having large blood clots has caused some excessive scarring too. If you're found to have any pulmonary nodules, they're going to be monitored for any growth just in case they might be malignant. So people are then referred to have follow-up scans, usually around a year later, to see if there's been any change in size. If there has, then they'll likely be referred for other tests or scans like a PET scan, and then if need be, it'll be surgically removed. So my doctor told me that I'll need to go for another CT in February 2022 so that they can review the nodules and see if there's been any growth. So you can see what they look like. I found an image of an x-ray online of a case that has multiple pulmonary nodules. So this is what they look like when they show up on an x-ray. And I've also put some links in the description below so you can read more about pulmonary nodules. So anyway, I get told all that and then I ask what happens next and it's pretty much nothing. She basically said to me that I don't need any more appointments with a thrombosis clinic because the clots have dissolved now and they've done all of the testing to see any physiological causes of my ongoing pain and fatigue. They can't refer me to a long COVID clinic because I never had a positive test and obviously the serology came back negative because it's been over a year since I had the potential infection. The blood tests I had also didn't bring up anything of note, so there's nothing left to physically treat in her eyes. So she said from here on out, everything gets handed back to my family doctor. So she was gonna dictate a note for her to be able to take over my care from here on out, including the warfarin, because it looks like I'm definitely on that for life. So I went for my weekly blood test for my INR level on Wednesday this week and the thrombosis clinic was still the ones to call me yesterday and they gave me the result that it's at 3.3 right now. She did say they were expecting that I should have regulated within the last week but I hadn't so they wanted me to change my dose for Thursday and Friday this week to 7.5 and then go back on 10 mil every day up until another weekly blood test next Wednesday. I assume that once I'm actually stable within my therapeutic level of between two and three, that my GP will then be fully taking over everything to do with the warfarin. What my doctor did tell me on the phone was that they do want me to start winding down going for blood tests every single week because it's not pleasant for anybody. And that eventually I will be going down to once every two weeks and then maybe every month. And then I eventually I will look at getting my own machine so that I can test my INR at home. I have an appointment with my GP booked in towards the end of next week, so I won't be given any updates on what's going on with me for at least a couple of weeks. But this is where I'm at right now, and in honesty, after that phone call with the thrombosis clinic last week, it all just seems like my case has just been dropped, but without any real prep. I'm left feeling the exact same in terms of the pain and the fatigue, all of the physical symptoms that I've been going through the last nine months, but now I've got a lot less interaction. So just to summarize me, I'm nine months out from diagnosis of submassive pulmonary embolism. The clots have finally dissolved after still being there at the six month mark. Now at nine months, they are no longer showing, but I do have extensive scarring and some lung nodules. The thrombosis clinic is now no longer involved and I'm awaiting input from my family doctor and so far I'm still having trouble regulating on the warfarin and having weekly blood tests which I've had to do since November 2020. But anyways, thank you for watching this short little update on what's going on with me right now. Hit the like if you made it this far. 
And if you're in recovery from a blood clot, you have a clotting disorder, or if you're just suffering some long-term pain and fatigue, then I highly recommend hitting that subscribe button because I'm here every single week giving you guys content about being in recovery from pulmonary embolism. As always, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.